Hey guys, Nate here with another Data Science SQL interview question walkthrough. This question comes from Noom, a health tech company, and this question will test your ability to filter out data based off of a date conditional. That's the unique part of this question. Of course, we're gonna be dealing with uh, fetching data, you know, data wrangling, aggregations, grouping and sorting, but that won't be the focus of today's question. So I'll walk you through solving the question like we're on an interview and I'll give you some tips on how I actually approach the solution like we're on an interview. So let's get started. If you like content like this, please subscribe to my channel and watch some of my other videos on how to solve data science interview questions. All right, so this is a medium difficulty question by Noom. The question is called transactions by billing method and signup ID. So the question reads, get a list of signups which have a transaction start date earlier than 10 months ago from today. For all those users, get the average transaction value and group it by the billing cycle. So once you have that, your output should include the billing cycle, the signup ID of the user, and the average transaction amount. Sort your results by billing cycle in reverse alphabetical order and sign up ID in ascending order. Okay, so before we get started, before we even write a line of code, let's talk about the framework in which I would use to solve the problem and also guide the interviewer if I were on an interview. So the first step is to understand your data. I would list your assumptions about the data columns so you know which columns to use. If you don't feel confident that you understand the data or the data columns, you can do two things. You can first uh, view the first few rows of the data itself, the data table. But on an interview, you typically actually don't have access to the data. You're actually writing either on a whiteboard or on a notepad and not executing code on a database. So you can't see that data, you can't view it. So what I would do is I would talk to the interviewer to get an understanding of what the data columns means and any you know, example values that they can uh, tell you for you to understand um, how the data is uh, kind of stored in that table uh, to help you identify edge cases that you would need to um, implement in your solution. Number two, formulate your approach. You're still not writing code at this point. So what I would do is write down the logical steps um, I would take to solve the problem. And what you wanna do is just write it out um, in, in words, not in codes, so that you're guiding the interviewer through your thought process. There you would identify the main functions you would use or implement to perform your logic. And just so you know, the interviewer is watching you, they're hearing everything you're saying, um, and so they'll intervene when appropriate. If you're making a wrong assumption or you're just getting something in the logic uh, wrong, they'll help you out. And specifically, they'll let you know whether or not you can use ready-made functions or if you have to create the function uh, or algorithm from scratch. All right, so number three in the framework is code execution. And so you're finally writing code. And so when I write code both on the day job but also on interviews, I build my code up in steps just like I've outlined it uh, with the interviewer. That's the whole purpose of actually writing out your logic. You're basically writing out the steps in terms of how you're gonna implement the code. So what does this mean? This means that the code is probably not gonna be written in the most efficient way. That's totally fine. You can talk about optimization later um, after you solve the problem. The most important point is not to overcomplicate your code with you know, a lot of logic and rules in you know, small sections of your code. So what I usually do is I will just write one or two logical statements or business rules in each section of my code. And a section could be a code block where it could be a subquery or a CTE. Um, where the, the code itself is confined to just a few blocks or a few lines of code, all right? So you don't wanna overcomplicate it and add a lot of logic, just add one or two logical statements at most. And last tip, speak up and talk as you're writing the code because the interviewer is not only gonna be evaluating your technical abilities, 
but also your communication skills and problem solving skills. All right, so with that framework in mind, let's start using that and apply it to the question we're trying to solve. All right, so the first thing I would want to do with the interviewer is talk about the data columns and the underlying data so we get an understanding of what we're working with and what we can use to answer this question. Uh, so we have here three tables. We have signups, transactions, and plans. So what this question is asking us to do is get a list of signups which have a transaction start date of earlier than 10 months ago from today. And then lastly, I would want to group it by the billing cycle. All right, so I know because I have signups, transaction start date, and a billing cycle, I'm going to be transversing through all three of these tables here. So I'm going to be joining signups, transactions, and plans, and it looks to me that the signup ID here in these two tables is what I'm going to use as my join key, and then the plan ID to plans ID is what I'm going to be using um, to join these two tables together. And so one thing that's not obvious is really that this plan ID in the signups table and this ID column in this plans table are actually the same column. It's a foreign key to a primary key and you can connect them together. It's not obvious. So that's something I would ask the interviewer to see if my assumption is correct. You know, this is a standard nomenclature for anybody uh, that has dealt with databases where the foreign key is typically prefaced with the table name and then you have uh, the column from that table itself. So that's why my assumption is that plan ID is a foreign key to the ID column in the plans table. So talk to your interviewer to confirm that. Uh, what we're also going to be using uh, is the transaction start date because the question is asking for us to find signups uh, with a transaction start date of earlier than 10 months ago from today. Uh, we're also going to be using uh, signup ID as uh, the signup ID of the user. And then of course, from the plans table, we care about the billing cycle. And lastly, what we're actually trying to calculate is the average transaction value. And my assumption is that we're gonna be using the amount column from the transaction table. And again, I would verify that with the interviewer to make sure that that's correct, all right? So let's say we did all that with the interviewer and our all of our assumptions are correct. So the next thing we wanna do is write out our logic in terms of the steps we're gonna to take to, to solve this problem. Okay, so the next step I'm gonna do is write out my logic step by step and communicate those steps with the interviewer. Okay, so the, the first step here is that I wanna join all three tables together based off of the signup ID and the plan ID columns that I see in these three tables, right? Why that's important is because we need to get pieces of information from all tables to actually solve this question. The next step is to filter the data on transactions that were made earlier than 10 months ago from today using the transaction start date column. All right, so this is the hard part of the question. This is what uh, the question is testing us on. Can we create a conditional where we're able to filter transactions that were made earlier than 10 months ago from today, right? So this is kind of dynamic because today could mean any date. It's just whatever date you're doing this problem on. This is what makes the problem hard. This is what they're testing us on. So I would use the now function to get the date of today and I can subtract 10 months by multiplying 10 and multiplying that by one month. So if I do that, I should get transactions that were 10 months earlier from today. And then the last two steps are easy. You're gonna calculate the average amount that you see across um, all the transactions and group it by the billing cycle. And then you're gonna sort the data based off of what the question is asking us to sort on. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is join the three tables together uh, based off of signup ID and plan ID. So this is the query here. We're starting with the transaction table in this from clause because 
we really just care about the transactions and the users that have logs in the transaction table. And then we're gonna be joining records from the signups and then from the plans table. And we're gonna be using an inner join because the assumption here is that we only want users that have records in all three tables. This is something that you would have to talk to your interviewer about to see if that makes sense, right? And if the table behaves in a different way, you might wanna use the left join or some sort of other outer join uh, to preserve, you know, whatever records uh, will be in this from clause here. Uh, but the assumption here is that we we want all records of users across all tables. So if we run this query here, we should get all of the columns across all three tables, which we get. So this is fine. Now the focus of the question itself, which is dealing with dates, right? So we're gonna filter the data on transactions that were made earlier than 10 months ago from today. So what I'm going to be doing is adding a where clause here and then using this conditional uh, now minus 10 multiplied by an interval of one month. Uh, we want to use this on the transaction date column. And so that's going to look like this. So if I run this code, all of the transaction start dates, as you see this column right here, should be earlier than 10 months ago from today. Today is May 28th, 2021. And as you can see, all of these transactions are earlier than 10 months from today. So just to explain this part of the code in depth, uh, what we're really doing is we're taking today's date. So that would be uh, May 28th, 2021. And then we're subtracting uh, basically 10 months from that. So what is the cutoff here? So the cutoff here should be August 28th, 2020. And as you go down uh, the transaction uh, start date column, you should see all of the dates earlier than that date. All right, so now the next step is to calculate the average amount of all transactions per user per billing cycle. So the way I, I read this or interpret that is adding essentially billing cycle and then sign up ID because a user, uh, according to the question, we're gonna be using a sign up ID to represent a user and then taking the average of the amount of value in the amount column, all right? And we're naming that average amount. Then obviously we wanna add a group by. We're gonna group by the billing cycle and the sign up ID. So let's just run this code just to make sure it works. Uh, we have billing cycle monthly, quarterly, that's right, uh, the sign up ID, which is really the user, and so far we have this average amount. And then lastly, the icing on the cake is to sort the data. That's the last requirement of this um, question. So we wanna order by the billing cycle in descending order and then the sign up ID in ascending order. So if we run this code, uh, we get quarterly first, uh, and then we should get uh, monthly last, and then we should see the sign up ID or the users increase as as we go down. So if we check the solution, our solution is correct. So a question that gets asked a lot at the end of the interview is whether or not there's a way to optimize the code. So the interviewer here is trying to test your knowledge of SQL theory. So you definitely should say something even if there's no way to optimize this code. So let's take a look at our solution here. To me, there's no way to optimize this code. Sometimes you can remove a join and use a case statement instead but it's not gonna work with our question, with our approach, uh, because we need to identify the date difference across the entire data set. So um, we're not gonna be able to remove a join in this case. But maybe what you can do is separate out this date logic to work just on the transaction table, because this is the transaction start date that we're talking about, um, and it's really just um, on this transaction table. So you have a subquery or a CTE that has this uh, where clause there. It reduces the data set and then you perform the joins. Maybe that will um, optimize the runtime, but I don't think it will lead to massive uh, efficiency gains. So even if there's no way to optimize the code, um, what you just did or what I just did was just drop some alternative solutions, other ways to write the code, uh, but basically just dropping some more SQL knowledge for the interviewer so they are confident that you know your SQL. 
So this was a medium level problem, uh, fairly easy I would say. I mean the hard part was really just joining the three tables together which is not that hard. So what makes this question somewhat difficult and what they're testing you on is really dealing with dates and manipulating dates. Understanding you know date functions, understanding how to you know back calculate uh, different dates dynamically and all of that. And so that's what makes it somewhat difficult of a problem. And it makes sense because as you are working with data, um, you are going to be working with uh, dates almost every single day as a data analyst or a data scientist. So you really need to know how to manage and manipulate dates. Again, the trick to this question is to use the framework that I, I outlined earlier to organize your thoughts. Uh, because there are multiple steps, but you know, once you lay out all of the assumptions and then wrote down the step-by-step -step logic and then start the code, everything is pretty easy. And so on interviews, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to not make things up on the fly and just manage a framework and understand step-by-step -step what you need to do. Uh, because typically people are very nervous um, on an interview and you might not be thinking with 100% clarity. So rely on a framework through practice to get you to be confident on inter interviews and to have some sort of like crutch just in case you're very stressed out and can't think clearly. So that's my advice to you. Practice the framework, practice organizing your thoughts before you code, and then just practice the coding part. All right, so that's it for me today. If you like content like this, please subscribe to my channel. Watch the videos where I'm answering SQL interview questions uh, to understand how I think about it, how I approach it, and how I code those solutions. All right, thank you guys.